3. Francis Bacon Francis Bacon, 1561-1626, perhaps more than any other man, influenced the new view of science. In his Novum Organum, Aphorism 124, he wrote, Truth, therefore, and utility are here the very same things, and works themselves are greater value as pledges of truth than as contributing to the comforts of life. Bacon denied the primacy of ideas. Instead of approaching the world from the perspective of a philosophy, a worldview, or a theory, Bacon proposed that the new science let the facts determine science, and a pragmatic concept of truth then be forthcoming as the theory. Bacon's position, the priority of factuality and the pragmatic standard of truth, represented no less a philosophy than the scholasticism he opposed. Plato had held to the priority of the idea. Aristotle had tried to maintain a dialectical tension between form and matter, idea and brute fact. Bacon stood Plato on his head and asserted the priority of the fact, and derived ostensibly his truth from the fact. All three positions are equally philosophical. The idea that facts are both prior and self-interpreting is as much a form of faith as Plato's, Aristotle and Aquinas' positions had been. Like them, Bacon had tried to remake the world in terms of his own idea. In philosophy, Bacon clearly pointed out the direction for Kant and Dewey. In science, his position led to the Royal Society. No less than Descartes, Bacon's position was governed by philosophical presuppositions which he termed quote-unquote science. Thus, in Bacon's New Atlantis, the world of religion, is left largely undisturbed as are economic and social questions. Bacon was not interested in the communistic extravagances of other utopias. His hope for man's future rested in science, or, more accurately, in a state-controlled science. Bacon, in fact, was clearly critical of Moore's morality, speaking critically of a feigned commonwealth where the married couple are permitted, before they contract, to see one another naked. The heart of Bacon's utopia was Solomon's House, the College of the State Scientists, a state-created and state-controlled scientific body, the purpose of this body is stated thus. The end of our foundation is the knowledge of causes and secret motion of all things and the enlarging of the bounds of human empire to the effecting of all things possible. As Lewis Mumford observed, long before all the components of the invisible machine were consciously assembled, Francis Bacon, in his New Atlantis, was quick not merely to anticipate its benefits, but to outline the conditions for its achievement, the application of science to all human affairs, to the effecting of all things possible. According to Fry, Bacon, in his New Atlantis, anticipates Marx by assuming that the most significant of social factors is technological productivity. Polak sees a direct strain which leads on from Francis Bacon's New Atlantis from which the Royal Society in England descended in a straight line, towards ideals of technical progress which later blended with the American creed and finally made aid to an enslaving technocracy. Sears observes, Beginning with Bacon's New Atlantis, or perhaps earlier, there has been a significant change of emphasis in the visions of utopia. The older writings, as we have noted earlier, concerned themselves heavily with moral and political factors. Gradually, there has been an increasing preoccupation with man's ability to manipulate his environment and rely upon technological devices. At one extreme, this has resulted in the absorbing faith in science as a guarantee against any emergency we may create for ourselves. At the other, there has developed an impressive literature of satire and disillusionment at least some of whose writers are better versed in science than the uncritical optimists. These discerning comments help bring to focus a central aspect of Bacon's utopianism and of a great strand of thoughts after him. The one great one, 
is now totally imminent. It is mankind organised as the state, its instruments in issuing a new ultimate decree, a new predestination for man and nature is technology and science. Science is thus cast into a messianic role and becomes progressively basic to utopianism 